I um, took the dictionary part and I wrote it in my interpretation of the words. And a lot of people, it's funny, a lot of the people like Constitution Man says, you can't do that, you can't do that. So let me see, Daniel Webster did it, Bouvier did it, uh, Black's Law Dictionary folks did it, you know, the Ghana people did it, you know, those are the people who were the editors of Black's. And that just happens to be my mom's main name, is Ghana, and they wrote all the Black's Law Dictionary, so that's pretty funny. That's what they all did. I said, so don't tell me that I can't make my dictionary by sourcing all these other dictionaries and all the etymologies of the word, and don't tell me that I can't make it read the way I want it to read. I said, don't tell me that, because I'm going to move my claim and my words in court. This is my turn in the sun. This is my turn on planet Earth. I'm not bound by somebody else's beliefs that lived 100, 200 years ago. This is my turn to make the law. This is my turn to say what is right or wrong. They had their turn to define what was right or wrong. Now it's my turn. Now somebody else is going to have to come forth and say that my belief is a bad belief. And if he tries to say, well, that's what they, that's what uh, the Bible says from what Moses did. And it's like, wait a second. The guy who wrote the story of Moses lived 650 years after Moses lived. So are you trying to tell me that that man knows exactly what happened to Moses? He's not first-hand witness to it. He lived 650 years after the fact. It's like me trying, in 650 years from now, trying to explain what George Washington did. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. You think my great 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 is going to know what George Washington actually did? Or are they just going to be uh, guessing what he did? So like I said, look, it's nice stories. It's beautiful lore. It, it's nice reading. But you know what? This is my turn to live on planet Earth. I really have so many minutes and so many seconds. This is how I choose to live. This is my wish. This is my belief. This is my government. My government is how I determine to steer my mind and my body and my free will. I'm not bound by a piece of paper. That constitution is two-dimensional. It has nothing to do with me. It does not bind me. It does not bound me. What it does, it bounds the fictional entities in the government. It does not bind me, the man. So if you want to be a United States citizen, it will sure bind you. Of course it does. You're subject to control because you accepted the terms and the conditions of that contract. And if you decide to be bound by a piece of paper, well, God bless you. I just choose not to. Right. It's not a bad document, but it doesn't have nothing to do with me. Who they, who they decide who's going to be the chief executive officer of that, you know, of that entity. I've got nothing. I couldn't care less who's the president of Coca-Cola. What does that have to do with me? You know, he has no yeah. right. He has no right to tell me what to do. You know, so, like I said, unless you're a subject of that, you know, President of Coca-Cola, like if I'm their employee, well, then, of course, he can tell me what I can and cannot do when I can and cannot enter that building. Of course, he can tell me what I must do to be in full compliance with the terms and conditions that he sets forth. That's fine, but that's not me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's pretty simple. Like I said, this stuff is so simple, it's scary. You know, and, and uh, like I said, I, I sent somebody a link for Lysander's <laughs> Yeah, have you folks ever listened to Lysander Spooner? Uh, yeah, a little bit. You're starting to break up a little bit. I don't know if your da- battery's going dead or not. That's what's got to be. The battery's got to be dying. Carl, people, keep your people are wondering, so, because um, I get a lot of calls, too, um, when you say it doesn't apply to me, I'm not part of that system. Did you do any kind of paperwork to revoke anything, or you just never, ever signed up for any of their claimed benefits that nobody knew about the true meaning of as a young person, well, we were told you can't get a job, you can't unless you have a social security number, you can't you gotta have a driver's license to do this and this and this, you gotta have this, you gotta have that. A lot of people got sucked into that. And well, they're so saying, Now how do I get out of it? There's nothing being sucked in. You just you just uh claim the benefit, big deal. It's a gift. You can either accept the gift or you don't have to accept the gift. It's it, it's 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 a gift given to you, and uh, you have the right to uh, exercise that, you know, and, and enjoy that gift. Or you don't. Just because somebody gives you a GI Joe doll or a Barbie doll doesn't mean you have to play with it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you only want to exercise your right to enjoy that gift once a lifetime, there you go. Nobody could compel you to to accept that gift and perform and say, "Well, I gave you that doll. You better play with it, or else." It's a gift. It's well, a benefit. Yeah, I received a phone call today from a elderly lady that said uh, she's now in Washington State and she's never had a Washington State license to drive. And yeah. now they have suspended whatever they think they had about four times. And uh, now she's on the run 
from the court system. And she said, what do I do? How do I get out of this? How's she on a run? Well, because they did pick her up, put her in jail, and then she just didn't go back to court. Why is she suing for putting her in jail? They had no right to touch her body. Because, see, this is very simple. This is what I say to everybody. Folks got to understand this is beyond simple. They want you to have a driver's license, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, they want you to have a driver's license. Okay? Can the government license something that is unlawful? They're not supposed to, but they... they... The government can't tell you that it's okay to break the law, can they? Nope. No. The government can't tell you to do anything that's unlawful. So if it was lawful, when you get the license, it clearly says, like, in the definition of a license, it's like you, you obtain a license because if you, if you, uh, um, you're getting, you're granted permission from the government to do something that is lawful. I wonder how do I get permission from the government to do something that is already lawful? If it's lawful to drive, why do I have to have a driver's license? Because they say it's required, I explained to Dean Clifford earlier today, required means to demand of right or by authority. So you say, by what authority do you have to demand me to have this piece of plastic in my pocket? I mean, you can go, you can go play pretzel logic with these folks. It says, uh, well, you have to have a driver's license. It's like, well, I didn't create that thing. It's not mine. I can't claim it because it's not mine. I'm not the creator of it, and it could be revoked or rescinded. It could be taken back from me at any time at will by the creator of the 12 motor vehicles or the state of Washington. So it's not mine. Clearly, if it was mine, if it was my property. Property means it's proper to my person, exclusive to all others, and I have the right to enjoy it and possess it, uh, exclusive of all others. So if anybody else can make a claim to this piece of plastic, well, then obviously it's not mine. If somebody else can control this piece of plastic, to tell me what I can and cannot do with it, well, then obviously this is not mine. This is not my property. So do I have a driver's license? I did that to poor Mr. Gordon Hall. I said, no, I don't. It's not mine. I didn't create it. I'm not the creator of it. I can't define it. I can't describe it. I have no rights to it. It's not mine. But what people are saying, Carl, is that people say this to these mercenaries on the road, and they... You don't say anything to them. You say, yes, sir, no, sir, have a nice day, thank you, kind sir. You just accept whatever tickets they want to give you. You just they accept don't give, your face. They don't give tickets. What do they do? Smash windows and take you out of the car. Well, it depends. Did you say, just please give me all your tickets that you want? I love taking tickets. I did. Did you say, I have nothing better to do all day than sit here and take tickets? Mm-hmm. Yes, my I asked for their authority to make a claim, nope, and no. they said, nope, no. That... no, no, you don't negotiate on the side of the road. You get hit by a tractor trail, and that poor guy can get hit, too. No, you accept everything and say, look, dude, let's do this as fast as you can. My name is Carl Lenz, post office, blah, 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 blah. This is where I live. You want a mailing address? You want to see whether you can pick me up? This is the, this is the farm where I live at. I live right next to the, the, the Jehovah Witness Church. You know where that is? Across from the trailer park? Yeah, that's where I live. And I get my tickets, and I conduct my business, and I get him. I said, look, this is fast, you can't, so neither one of them gets his bike track the trail. Let's get on a happy way. And then you make your proposal, and you make your counter offer, whatever you want to call it, to the district attorney the next day. Whoever's going to prosecute this? Like, sir, who's going to prosecute this? He's like, are you going to prosecute, or are you going to give the prosecuting attorney? Okay, thank you, sir. Do you know where his office might be off the top of your head? Yeah, second floor on the district court building. Okay, thank you. You know what his name is? No, I'm not sure. Okay, okay thank you. I'll find out tomorrow morning. Thank you. And then you make a, you send a proposal back and say, I cannot accept such a generous offer. I cannot accept such a generous gift. I, I, I just have, you know, it's too much of a burden on me at this time. I can't accept such a wonderful uh, proposal for me to do this in exchange of that. But thank you anyway. Or you can say you had no right to do what he did, but obviously I'm not going to argue with the man on the side of the road. Obviously I have the right to travel. Obviously you can't give a license to something that's unlawful. So obviously driving a car is lawful, you know, and there's nothing in your code that says a man who's obeying the law and not breaking the law, to be held liable unless he causes harm or there's a claim before this court that's verifiable. So you go down a couple of venues with them. You could just basically just tell them, look, please just take a ticket back because I can't accept such a generous gift. The second way, you could say, look, I'll pay you a dollar a day for the next 350 days for this $350 ticket. Or you can make a, count, or you can make a claim against him and sue him for interfering with your right to travel. So there's like three ways I could do right off the top of my head, whichever way you guys are comfortable with. Most people just want to hand the tickets back and, and, and just never see it again. Most people don't want to sue the cop. And very few people just want to say, like, like I did with the, 
when I was convicted of uh, the moonshine stuff, I said, look, to the judge, I said, I'll uh, to pay you five dollars a week for the next 60 weeks. He said, okay, fine. Whatever you and the clerk work out, that's fine by me. Just tell the lady it's okay, whatever, you know. He said, you ain't got the $300 now? Nope. Basically pay you a dollar a day. Well, let's make it five dollars a week. He said, okay. I said, I'm mailing to you from Florida. He said, okay, bye. So the court's willing to work with you folks. If you just want to pay it, and say, look, the best I could do is uh, $5 a week. Believe me, I said, sir, if I get $300, I win the lottery. I'll pay you guys off tomorrow. I'll get this off my back. I said, but right now I've got a couple of kids and a wife, and uh, obviously you told me it would be a good idea to leave the state of North Carolina because spitting on a sidewalk brings a federal felony back up into your court. We start this all over again. I'd be violating the three years on supervised probation, so you told me to leave the state. So I'm going to need every penny I got to move to Florida. He said, okay, I understand. They'll work with you because I made him an offer. If, if he said, no, you have to pay me the $300 you have to pay me now, the debt is no longer due because I gave him an offer of $5 a week. He has to accept it. He can't say no. He's got no choice. He knows the law. I tendered him an offer to pay off a debt. He says, no, you have to do this. Did you just not accept my payment on the debt? Well, yes. I just, Well, then you know the law, Judge. The debt is no longer due. You dishonored. My offer. You gave me an offer paying three hundred dollars for three years in jail. I said, Well, that's a lovely offer. I don't want to go to jail, so I'll pay you three hundred dollars, but how about I pay you five dollars a week? He could give me a counter offer. He could say, Well, I'm going to require you to pay ten dollars or I'll give you a year and a half in jail. He can go back and forth, but he can't say no. No is a fighting word. You can't say no. You can't bring a controversy into the court. You can't do it. The first person brings a controversy out in the public goes to jail. The first person brings a controversy into the court is held in contempt of court. You can't say no. You just, yes, 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 sir, to that. Yes, sir. Oh, you want that? Yes, sir. But let me make you an offer. That you can do. But you certainly can't tell them no. you got to keep the hot potato going back and forth. The first one who drops the hot potato loses. And you go to jail. <laughs> or you get held in contempt of court. Or the debt is no longer due. Very simple rules. It's just that we don't live in a country like if we were living in Saudi Arabia where they... Uh, haggle over something. It's like, oh, tell the guy you want to buy that watermelon. Oh, it says ten dollars. Give me ten dollars. Like, no, 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 no. He's screwing with you. He's screwing with you. All from a dollar. What? No, it says ten dollars. No, no. Oh, you're American. Oh, you don't know how to negotiate. You don't know how to negotiate. You don't know offer, counter offer, settlement, settle. Oh, you don't know any of those rules, do you? No. So you just think that because this guy wants ten dollars, you hand him ten dollars, right? No, he's going to think you're a jerk. All from a dollar. And he'll say, okay, five dollars. I said, well, now tell him two dollars. He's like, wow. There you go. That's dealing with court. That's dealing with the judge. That's dealing with a credit card company. That's dealing with like that. You're making an off counter offer. They understand merchant law. It's ancient merchant law. When you go into court, you're dealing in, in, in this commercial, in, in a commercial venue. Make them an offer. Make them a counter offer. They offer you. Say, hey, look, three years in jail or three hundred dollars. Which one do you want to do? Huh. I said, well, I'll gladly take the three hundred dollars. This will pay the clerk of the court. Well, I'd love to pay the clerk of the court, but I just don't have that amount of money right now. Well, even if I do, I'm still going to need that money to uh, move. So what I can do, though, is I can mail you $5 a week before I send it down. It's very simple. It's negotiating, that's all. And as long as the judge sees that you're an honorable person, and he, you know, he told me that, he said, the sheriff really likes you. He said, the sheriff knows you work for the dairies out here, and you're full wet brain, and, you know, and uh, he knows you work six days a week. So, uh, you know, that's why I am uh, had no problem working with you. I said, oh, okay. I was trying, I said, like I said, I talked to him after the results. And, you know, that was pretty nice of him. And then he explained to me that, it was a federal crime, and he didn't want to see me go to federal court and federal penitentiary, and he said that we could work it out here first in the local county court. We have first jurisdiction of you. But if he gave me a hard time, I would have just transferred you over to the feds. So it's all negotiation. If the folks like you, they'll work with you, and they'll cut your break. So like I said, I had a good judge that uh, said that he talked to the sheriff, and uh, he said the sheriff said, you're all right. So uh, is there anything else anybody typed on the board? Any other questions before I wrap it up? Can you make these offers at any time? Of course. I wouldn't do it on the side of the freaking highway. <laughs> no, has, um, has been um, appointed um, a court-appointed count, uh, attorney. Do you Look, make the offer through the attorney, and do you make the offer directly to the court? Or do you make the offer to the Department of Transportation in the local area? Well, you could. You can make the offer to the court in writing prior to going to the court. You can settle everything on a private side with the court. You don't have to wait until you get before the judge. You can make him an offer. You know, you make the prosecutor the offer, not the judge. You make the prosecutor oh, the offer. Okay. 
Yeah. Right. You say the person who's pursuing you, the person who's who's the hunter, who's trying to drag you, your body, your carcass, you know, into the court and trying to get, you know, a pound of flesh from you. You try to settle the matter with him. You're not settling anything with the judge. I mean, it's hysterical, man. When I went there for moonshine, it was so upside down and backwards. They broke every protocol of any decency in court. It's hysterical. The judge was moving a whole a complaint for the prosecutor, and I was saying, "Holy cow!" I said, "I, I didn't even enter a plea yet. You you want to you want to go ask me if I'm guilty, not guilty, no contest?" And he said, "Oh, so you're trying to tell me that that's not you're still sitting in my chambers?" I said, "I didn't say that." I said, "But I didn't even enter a plea yet." He says, "Oh, so you're going to try to stand there and tell me today you're not guilty?" I said, um, I looked at, you know, around. I said, what's going on here? I said, he's like, uh, I said, he says, so you're going to try to tell me right now you're not guilty. I said, can I enter a plea? He says, oh, so you want to go enter the old plea thing. So just go ahead and stand there and lie to me today. And say, well, what? He said, well, he said, I just want to, to see if there's a claim before this court. I just want to see, uh, you know, who's going to claim that I did wrong. He said, oh, I see where we're going here. You want to change your venue, huh? I said, well, obviously, the jurisdiction is going to be common law, and there's nobody harmed. He said, well, what you did was a federal felony. Are you telling me you want to change a venue, son? He said, I'll give you a change of venue. Yeah, he told me when it was done <laughs> that he was going to call the feds and have me hauled off to Winston-Salem and be put in a federal penitentiary. So, see, that's when you got to be careful. These judges, they like you, they'll cut you a break. If you want to play it by the letter of the law and think you're a smartass, was like I said, when... Uh, the prosecuting attorney, she pulled out my rap sheet. It hit the floor and rolled. It was all traffic stuff. And I said to the judge, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, let me walk over to the prosecutor. said, I'm not going to hurt the, the sheriff or the prosecutor lady. I said, but I picked the rap sheet thing up off the floor. I said, look, if I want the court to take notice. I have never been found guilty of any uh, uh, wrongdoing to any man. And uh, any time I've been uh, accused of, uh, of violating a code, I said, I have... Uh, been always found uh, not guilty. So he says, oh, so you think you know the law? I said, oh, yeah, I know the law. He's like, where are you from? I said, New York City. He said, well, I'm going to tell you what, New York City, you're in Davie County, North Carolina today, and you will be found guilty of this crime. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, I thought this was a preliminary hearing to enter a plea. I said, wait a second, wait a second, you're just kind of like jumping the gun here. I said, one step at a time. He says, oh, no, I'm going right for sentencing. He says, what? The? Whoa. I said, wait a second, wait a second. I said, slow down, slow down. I said, how do you even know what's going on? He says, I got the still in, 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 in my uh, office. I said, what? I said, you already, you know, I said, yeah, I got the exhibit, and the, and the sheriff told me where you got it. I said, did you talk to the other side without me being there? I said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, I don't know what kind of nonsense you're pulling here. I said, I'm going to ask you to recuse yourself. He's like, oh, and he said, then you're going for a change. I said, yeah, I'm going to change the venue. I said, oh, I'll give you a change of venue, all right? That's not a problem. <laughs> So you see what I'm saying? You've got to be careful sometimes because sometimes these people might be getting you out of trouble. Because I could have sat in federal penitentiary or federal prison, whatever they call it, jail, and waited for trial for who knows how many years because I thought I'm a smart guy and I think I know the common law and I think I know, uh, uh, I think I know how to tell the judge to recuse himself and all this other nonsense. Where I just said to the judge, hey, man, you know, uh, work with me here on this. If I plead guilty, what are you going to do? He says, well, I'm going to give you a three-year uh, prison sentence. <laughs> I said, well, then obviously I'm going to go for the not guilty. <laughs> he says, okay, let me tell you what, smart guy. He says, if you plead guilty, you'll go home. If you plead not guilty, you're not going home. <laughs> I said, wait a second, you're confusing me. I said, can we just slow down a minute? He says, come on, guy, I got a full court today. Where do you want to go with this? I said, okay, I'm uh, guilty. He said, good choice. He said, I'll give you three years unsupervised probation and three hundred fine. Can you pay the fine? I said, uh, no. <laughs> he said, well, what can you do? <laughs> and then that's when we agreed on $5 a week for 60 weeks. He said, okay. Tell the clerk of the court, I told you uh, uh, $5 a week for the next 60 weeks, next case. <laughs> and then after it was over, I went back and I talked to him. I said, what the hell just happened there? I thought I'm pretty smart with law. But, my God, you really did a number on me. You know, this was back in 1992, you know, before I knew anything what I know now. But still, if I tried to play my smart guy stuff in a court like that, I'd been sitting in the federal penitentiary today. If I tried that same nonsense that I teach everybody, I show everybody here, you guys got to be very careful. You got to try to size up your competition. You got to try to size up that judge. And you got to try to realize what is the, the original jurisdiction. I was charged with a federal felony. They were handling it in a state county court. They were handling it in a county court. They had the ability to settle federal matters in a county court. 
So sometimes it's better to settle a matter in first little county court. Yeah, could have I, I said, this is a federal crime. I want to move over to a federal jurisdiction. Da, 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 you know the federal code. Da, da. Oh, you want to go to feds? Oh, we'll send you to the feds, all right. That's not a problem. How long do you think you're going to be sitting there before they ever get you on a docket? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I see. I see what you did. Thanks a lot. I said to the judge. He said, yeah, not a problem. So the sheriff said, you're a good guy. You work hard. You don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs. You know, so he knows the crazy Indians you live with. He says, uh, you're all right. <laughs> but it was a dry county. You couldn't make, you know, because those old Indians that lived up there. They said, you can't make, you know, moonshine. There's a reason why what you're if, What if a person is facing a situation where there's been a sort of a blackballing list that uh, if any people in the county have anything to do with you and they do anything for you other than come after you, that they will be blacklisted and um, they will lose their careers. How do you handle those kinds of situations for people that um, are more or less fingered or whatever you want to call it? You're you're trying to say that if you're trying to move a claim in a court, in a county, and you're saying it's corrupt? Yes. So you're saying you don't believe you're going to get a fair trial in that county? Absolutely. Okay. Is there a... um, is there a count? Is there a court there that seats a jury? It seats a jury. Yeah. Is there is there a, a courthouse big enough in that county that a jury could seat be seated that could sit there? Oh yes. Well, there you go. All you jury do is trial, but not trial oh. by jury. Yeah. Yeah. You, you ask for a trial by jury. You 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 have the right to have a trial by jury. You you move under the common law. You say I have the right to a trial by jury. If anybody's making a claim against. I have the right under the Bill of Rights, under Article 6, under Article 7, to convene a court of record by a trial by jury. And nobody can yeah, interfere. You, you just tell the, you just go tell the clerk that you want a jury trial. You just put it in writing and you keep your mouth shut. Okay. You stop talking to these people and you start putting it in writing. They don't have, yeah. they don't care less anything coming out of your mouth. They don't want to hear it. They don't, they just want to see it in writing. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to be neighborly to you. They don't want to be friendly to you. They don't want to give you any advice. They don't. They want you to just go away. So yeah. just, put it, just put it in writing. So that way they'll say it's not worth dealing with her. Just let her go away. Mm-hmm. They don't want to prosecute you then. They'll just say it's not worth spending this much money to get a trial by jury going. And like I said, when you move a trial by jury, you better be dead on because I'm telling you, if you're trying to say that you don't have a driver's license, don't have insurance, don't have this, don't have that, don't have tags, don't have anything, I'm telling you, when you put a trial by jury, you're going to lose. Explain that. I've because, had like four phone calls this week. Because everybody in the jury has insurance, has a driver's license, has uh, tags on their car. It's going to look at you like what kind of privileged character do you think you are? You think you're better than everybody else in society? Because the number one law and this, the number one protocol in this country, is custom. It's the custom of the people. That everybody in Washington carry these documents. Yes, the state next to me, Maryland, nobody has to have insurance. So it's the customs of the people. When 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 a Maryland state trooper stops you, he expects to not see insurance. He's not going to ask you for it because it's not required of you. So you're not going to have to convince a trial by jury in Maryland, well, the cops stopped me, didn't have insurance. So, well, shh, damn, everybody, nobody has insurance here in Maryland. So it's the customs of the people. So if everybody's like, look, well, my grandpappy had it, and I had it, and, well, hell, who does she think she is? She's had to have one, too. That's why you don't, that's why you don't go before a trial by jury if you're violating the custom. If this is the customs of the people, you better be in compliance with the customs. If... You have the law on your side, like I did, with driving backwards and failing to stop and going through stop signs. When I had the law on my side, I dismissed the jury and I let the judge see the black and white law in which he was bound to uphold. And and what would that be? The common law. I show him the common law. I said, under the common law, I have the right to go through stop signs. Under the common law, I have the right to not stop when I see a blue light flashing. Under the common law, I have the right to drive in reverse. I got the right to do 900 miles an hour. I got the right to levitate. I got the right to do whatever I wish, whatever I could dream of. I'm not bound by any rules, contract, piece of paper, or document. I'm a man. I'm unlimited in my rights. This is my turn on the planet, and I'm going to do whatever I wish, as long as I don't hurt nobody else while I'm doing it. When he read it, when he read it actually out of his own code book, he's like, 
I'll be damned. Case dismissed. I was like, yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's in, even in your books. It's not some crazy free man of Montana nonsense. It's actually in your books. I was like, my damn, I, n- I never saw that. Because it, it actually was in a footnote. I said, read the footnote. He said, what? Read the footnote. That little tiny, like, three, four font. Read the footnote. And he like, where would, where would one go to look here? Because, well, here in Washington, we have a case that says, um, the courts will recognize common law. I don't care. The, the easiest thing in, in a state to do is run right to that constitution. Don't worry. You're not going to not going to find it in precedent. The cases like mine that win, you're not going to find it. I'm going to have to tell you, look, go to the Commonwealth of Virginia, type in my name, this is the date, this is the ticket number, and you'll see the verdict. You'll see that I lost in district court and I won on appeal in circuit court. Then I'm going to print it somewhere so everybody could come in. It was funny, one of my buddies from Chicago said, uh, what's that code, whatever, and I told him, he said, you can't find it under the code of Virginia in 1950 anymore. Driving in reverse is gone. He said, it's gone, it's gone. I said, look, I said, wow, you're right, it's gone. Somebody must have said to somebody in the Department of Motor Vehicles or the code, uh, people who wrote the code, you better get rid of that because this guy could come back and sue us for the rest of his life and his grandchildren could sue us and his great-grandchildren could sue us for us filing a false claim against him and be smirching his good name and moving a claim that uh, in the law he was clearly within his rights to do. The code said that he couldn't do it, but the law clearly defined that he had that right to basically levitate around the planet, do 900 miles an hour and zigzag, go through stop signs and do whatever the hell he wishes to do. That's right. The code clearly establishes that. They bring in the law. So like I said, it's just that everybody's been so geared in their brains and their hearts and their minds that these pieces of paper bind them. I love it. Like I give that example of women all the time. You think a restraining order is going to stop your husband from putting a bullet in your head if he's pissed off at you? Yeah, you're going to pick up that restraining order and say, hey, buddy, you can't shoot me with that gun. See, if you shoot me with that gun, you're going to get into trouble. He's going to put a bullet right to the paper right to your heart. A piece of paper is not going to secure and protect you. A bat, a gun will. You say, well, I, you say to the judge, I said, this Constitution secures and protects me from doing what you do. It doesn't protect you. Knowledge of the law protects you. Saying, judge, huh, I'm going to hold you personally liable, man, if uh, you don't accept my claim. If you don't want to recognize my claim before this court, this is common law nation. You have to accept it. You have no choice. Whether you like it or not, this is my claim. This is my case. This is my turn. You know, and you can't do that nonsense as a defendant. You can't do it. You're wasting your time. They'll say that's not the matter that's before this court. You can't rely upon the Constitution. You can't rely on it. You can't do that. You can't. That's right. You can't. Because it's not your case. That's the man who prepared the case. Like I said before, the policeman wrote the ticket. He gave it to a lady. The lady gave it to a, a supervisor. The supervisor filed it. The file, she made a couple of copies of it. She sent it to the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor wrote up a claim or a complaint. He filed with the clerk of the court. The clerk of the court sent it to you and put a copy to the judge. These people are busting ass and building a hell of a case. You think you're just going to walk in on day 30 when you're supposed to appear and say, I'm here, and I'm going to say a couple of magic words and all my problems are going to disappear? You're kidding me. These people busted ass and built a hell of a case against you. They took a lot of energy and effort to do all this paperwork. You think you're just going to walk in without doing paperwork? You better do paperwork. Paperwork ain't hard. Like I said, I got a ticket on a Sunday. Left one I got was on a Sunday afternoon. By Monday morning, 9 o'clock, I was there handing it to the uh, prosecutor and trying to work out a deal with him to try to just make this go away. And he's like, nope, I'll see you in court in 30 days. We think we got a legitimate claim. And he's like, she was funny. She was like, who's the officer who wrote it to you? And he looked at the ticket. And he's like, I said, I don't know. I said, his name was this. Huh. He said, he's the code and officer, enforcement officer. He's been like here 30 years. He teaches all the recruits for the county. He's the master of the code. He ain't code better than anybody does. He says, oh, if he wrote that out to you, oh, it's good. I said, I'm sure he's the master code, codester of all time. I don't give a rat's ass what this code says. I have no clue what this code says, and I don't care. And there's nowhere in law that says I must know what this code says. I didn't break the law. And then, like I said, he said to me, are you a lawyer? I said, no, I'm like a lawyer's nightmare. You wish I was a lawyer. Then I'd be bound by your code. I'm not bound by your code. You can't tell me what I can and cannot do. You have no claim against me. He said, we'll see you in court. I said, okay. But I'm telling you, man, it's barratry, file a false claim, and malicious prosecution. I said, but that's okay. I got bigger fish to fry right now. I said, this is all Mickey Mouse. I said, but I can come back and sue you. My grandkids could sue you. I said, anybody could sue you. You know, common law, there's no statute of limitations. Anybody could sue you for all time. So like I said, this this law is way too simple, guys. This isn't rocket science. And uh, is there anything else you want to ask me or... No, it's wonderful. You make statements that, that uh, do the recipe, Carl. It's great. 
and um, I think people just need to think about what they're doing, your scenario. Of, you know, make, go in and make an offer to the prosecuting attorney. If they deny the offer, they don't accept the offer, then that debt is gone. It's paid. Yeah, well, if like there a, is no claim. And right. if they make a counteroffer back to you, well, then you can always make another counteroffer back to them. Right. Like I said. Until and, you get it down to where you can manage it. Right. Exactly. You know, then that's what they, then, like I said, you could show the court that they moved in bad faith. And like I say to everybody all the time, in my state, Commonwealth, there's a very simple two-sentence line in the Virginia Code Book of 1950 under the Virginia Supreme Court Rules, VSR, and it's 7B, like Bravo, colon, number 4. It's 7B4. 7B, colon, 4. And it says, in a civil matter before the court, until all parties are ready to move, the court cannot move. So what that's basically saying is, until all the administration offers, like offers and acceptance and settlement offers and set-off offers, and everything has been exhausted, and you guys still can't come up with a remedy or a solution between you knuckleheads, then the court will decide. But until then, no third-party intervener can come between the problem between you and him. Mm -hmm. you, don't have to, you don't have to air your dirty laundry out for the world to see. You have that right to keep it private, as long as it's civil. I'm not talking about criminal complaints. I'm talking about civil. Well, the criminal complaints now are civil. Well, the criminal complaint, like I said, how you settle a criminal complaint is you'd have to tell them, do you have a verified claim of a harm or an injury before this court? Not a statute. I didn't say anything about no damn statute. But like I said, that's why I gave you folks the, the example about the federal criminal complaint against me. I was able to settle it at the count level. Thank God. Because no. the federal, they don't want to settle anything with me. Like if Gordon Hall went to federal jail, uh -huh. Yeah, he's going to make his conditional acceptance of all upon bonafide proof of claim and secure party credit and all collateral interest in the name Gordon Hall. The, the feds are going to laugh at him. They're like, dude, we print the money. We make the money. We don't need your money. We don't need your uh, $2 million site draft. We, we don't need your nonsense. Yeah, I'm going to love to see. If that's the real Gordon Hall and a Benton Hall that actually went there, oh, I'm going to love to see them uh, weave their magic of how they're going to handle a court. Because when I told him how to handle a court, he started cursing at me. He said, we don't do that common law bullshit here. To keep that bullshit to wherever you do it, how we enter the court, we make proposals to the court, we plead guilty, and we set off the debt. I said, you're going to plead guilty and set off the debt? The debt to the feds? <laughs> the, the, the feds don't care if you're uh, Bill Gates. You're going to jail. The, the feds don't care if you're Bernie Mader. The, go the, 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 <laughs> the, the government doesn't care if you're Ron Blagojevich. You're the governor of Alabama, the governor of Illinois. You're going to jail. The government don't want to hear nothing. You're going to jail, buddy. You don't mess with the feds. Everybody knows that. And so, oh, well, you conditionally accept your offer. I said, you're crazy. The only thing that might help you in, a, in, in federal court is move it over to the district court of the United States because somebody said that to me. Well, they didn't say it to me. They said it on Rod, uh, not Rod Classes. Yeah, Rod Classes show. He says, hey, did anybody notice that, in, that um, the indictment was moved through the United States district court? And did you notice that Rod Class, uh, did you notice that Tim Turner, was found guilty through the district court of the United States, not the United States district court who originally indicted him. I said, yeah, does anybody understand the difference between going from an administrative court to a judicial court? Did anybody notice that little uh, shift in jurisdiction there? No, none of you noticed that, did you? When are you guys going to notice? The United States district court is an administrative court. The district court of the United States handles judiciary matters. Two different separate, like, total different entities. And they just started talking about some crazy Title 42 he. Rod Class couldn't even figure out how to get a, out, of, out of a blue light on his Jeep traffic ticket. He was found guilty of that. He tried all this crazy nonsense, and the judge just said, you're guilty. Old Rod, mm -hmm. Rod Class had to do is say, this is the original equipment that came with the Jeep. This blue light came originally to me. This is the original equipment that was attached to the Jeep. And they, they could bring all the evidence to the court and say, Jeep never fucking made this, blah, 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 blah. He's like, look, when I originally got it yesterday, it had a blue light on it. As far as I'm concerned. It's the original equipment that came with the vehicle. Mm -hmm. You have to say, can anybody say that this is not how I originally got it? Well, Jeep never manufactured with it. Like, how do I know? You think I'm going to find a, a, a bankrupt company? It was Chrysler, and now I think Jeep is owned by Mercedes, or then it's owned by Isuzu. You think I'm actually going to find the president of, of the CEO of Jeep, International Harvester, whatever they used to be, and, and ask him, hey, did you ever put a blue light on one of these things? 
I don't care. You know what? That's the reason why I bought the damn thing. It's like, hey, look, that really cool blue light. That's all you had to say. Can anybody say that it did not come that way when I bought it? No. So as far as I'm concerned, that's original. That's the only argument he had to bring. He brought all this other silly stuff. He couldn't even, he couldn't even beat <laughs> traffic off a blue light on his truck. Mm-hmm. This stuff is too simple. Well, and yet we have to bring it down to a, a, a very simple. Well, People have just been uh, trying to find the um, the the one item out of the mulligan stew, and all you got to do is, you know, take all the items out of the mulligan stew and end up with water. That's it. I mean, it's it's hysterical. I mean, if I did rock classes, thing, the court. I'm telling you, every time I go to court, the judges love me. They try to keep from laughing. Think of like that one. I remember the one judge in Las Vegas said that I've been doing since 1968. He said that was the best legal argument I've ever heard in my life. I said, well, it was lawful, and I, I was and I argued it. It was not an argument, but I know what you're saying, Judge. He says, I'm telling you what. If I ever hear that argument or argue the law again like that in my court, oh, I know where it came from. And if you ever ever appear in this court again in my county, in Clark County, because I'm telling you, I will have your license revoked. And you will never have a driver's license in the state of Nevada ever again. I said, whoa, 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 you just threatened me in open court in front of all these witnesses. He says, who's going to testify on your behalf? He says, I'm telling you, buddy, I ever hear that legal bullshit come to my court again? I'll have your license. He says, I know people in Carson City. Kid, you ain't getting a license. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, well, then I'm fine. I guess I'm not guilty then, right? He said, oh, no, you're guilty. I said, wait a second. I said, look, okay, you know what? I'll take the guilty if we drop it down to like 10 bucks. He said, we'll make it 20. I said, no points in my license? And no points in my license. I said, okay, that's cool by me. It was funny as hell. And then the prosecutor ran out in the hallway and said, look, if you ever get another ticket, just give it to me and I'll make it go away. I don't ever want to go through something like that again, ever again in, my, in, in the court. Because the guy who gave me a ticket was the assistant chief. So the assistant chief, I had on a witness stand that was so cool, this big guy. He, gave me, he, he only let me see that he was giving me the thumbs up from the witness stand. Nobody else in the courtroom could see the He's like, damn, that's a good question. Damn, that's good. Damn, that's good. He was giving me that thumbs up. Because <laughs> he's like, I can't answer that. <laughs> that's good. That's probably not the best bullshit I've ever heard in my life. It's so funny. The guy who gave me the ticket was trying to keep from laughing. <laughs> so when people said, when somebody said that to me on one of the talk shows, I said to the person, I said, how do I perceive, how do you people perceive me? They said, uh, they said, well, we've been listening to this stuff since the 90s or the 2000s. And, you know, a lot of people are bitter and angry. They said, it sounds like you're having an awful lot of fun. I said, yeah, that's the only way you can go at these people. You've got to laugh about it. You've got to have fun. I said, because you can't take this stuff so serious. you only got one life to live. You might as well just try to figure it out and cut a deal and see what the best you can do. And he said, look, I didn't hurt nobody. Come on, honestly. Did I hurt anybody? Nah, come on. Cut me some slack here. What do you want? What do you want from me? How are we going to work this out? Because that's what I told the Las Vegas church. I said, you know, I'm going to win on appeals. I said, oh, you ain't even thinking about appealing this. I said, no, 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 I was just messing with you. I'll just pay you 20 bucks. I said, I ain't going to break my heart. <laughs> Because I knew what I did was dead wrong. You know, I shouldn't. Legally, it was dead wrong. Lawfully, yeah, sure. I could do 900 miles an hour. There's nothing you could do about it. But technically, yeah, I don't want some clown going down my street 900 miles an hour. So, yeah, you know, you, you bust me. <laughs> no big deal. That goes no harm. I'll pay a little bit. That's okay. Keep society under control. That's okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. But I ain't going to pay you no $200. You know, yeah, well, I had one lady call another another lady call me I think it was the end of last week. She says, Well Marie, they keep suspending my uh, my license but um they won't give me a license. Okay. And so. every time I go to apply for a license they say, Oh well, you've got ten driving while license suspended and you gotta pay every one of those times before you can get a license. Oh, so that's good. Well you gotta do then that'd be that'd be that'd be even better if they deny you something. That's sweet. All you would do then is, oh, yeah, you just, send, you just send it to the Department of Motor Vehicles. It's like, I uh, went to you, one of your local field offices, and I required, uh, uh, requested that I, uh, uh, that I be given a driver's license, and they told me until I do X, Y, and Z that they're not going to give me one. They say, you know, can you please uh, give me, you could say, can you please give me, like, the findings and facts and conclusion of law which you folks are relying upon or basing your uh, beliefs on or what you're basing your, uh, you know, your facts on. And let them write you a nice little letter. They say, well, there's a ticket here, ticket here, ticket here, ticket here, ticket here. And until you pay them off, we can't uh, give you a license. 
So there you go. So when you get stopped next time for driving without the license, present that to the court. So I did every I did everything I could to try to get a license back, but honestly, at this time, I just don't have that money. Believe me, if I had a lot of, if I won the lottery, or if my name was uh, Donald Trump, I would have wrote the lady out a check and went on my way. But this is the best I can do with what I got. You can't get blood from a stone. And I tried to make him an offer. I tried to pay him a dollar a week to pay off the debt, and they told me to go stick it. It's like they told you to stick it. Yeah, I told them. I said, look, I closed the letter. I said, the best I could do to pay off this thing is, like, I really need a license, and I need it today. The best I could do is pay you a dollar. Well, you give me a, a license on a dollar a day for the next uh, 5,000 days. And they said, no. So what more do you want me to do, Judge? See, in this country, we don't have debt as prison. This is a nation of common law. This is a nation of forgive and forget. This isn't merry old England. They can't ship you off to Australia because you can't pay a debt. Believe me, they wish they could, but they can't. They're going to try to make it that if you don't pay a debt in this country soon enough that you're going to go off to debt as prison, like you don't pay your student loan, you're going to go to debt as prison. Oh, you better believe it. They're going to try to get people convinced of that. But right now, we still live under these rules. So while we still have these to our disposal, I still use them. That you have to set off my debt if I ask you to. You don't have a choice. You have to. Why do they have to? It's the law of the land. They have no if choice. If you make an offer to set off the debt and request the debt be set off. Yeah, but not by being silly and saying, like, well, I, I request the debt to be set off, and you don't put a dollar amount there. And I don't want to get in those silly conversation about Federal Reserve notes aren't true notes, and I don't right. want to say. Right, right. <laughs> You say, I request that the, that this debt be settled, closed, and set off. Yeah. And they say, no, nope, you appear in court months That's from true. now. You got proof. So, then you move so then, on. then you move under common law to say, look, I gave an offer. Uh, you rejected it. So, therefore, I guess it's all taken care of. He brought, by saying no, the person who says no is operating under bad faith, and they brought the controversy into the public. It's like, who started the fight? Who punched who in the nose? Whoever said no is the one going to jail. Who said no? Whoever said no is the one that's going to be punished. Who said no? So like I said, believe me, you could go around and around with the cops on the side of the road as long as you wish. As soon as you say one word that is there's some form of a negative or a matter of controversy in the public, they will bash in your windows. You could keep working them. Oh, I've seen people on YouTube that keep these poor cops going for hours. <laughs> because I was like, I was just laughing. I said, this kid has got it right. This kid's got it right. Keep making the guy an offer. Keep saying, yes, I'll be glad to do that. And yes, I'll be glad to do that. And yes, and yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. and just keep, yes. <laughs> but the first time, you, first time you use the word no, your window's getting bashed out. You're getting teased. You're getting beaten up. You're getting dragged off to jail. The first time you bring a matter of controversy into the public. It's like, who started the fight? Who punched who in the nose? Who's the one who, who hit first? You're going to jail. Okay, so if you make a statement like, a, you know, um, I'm not refusing to give you what you asked for. I'm just asking you to tell me if, if there's a man here that's making a claim against me. Yeah, he could say, well, that, that's, he could say that, uh, you, you can take that up with the judge, ma'am. All I need to know is your driver's license. All I need to do is see your name, your driver's license, address. That's all I need to see, ma'am. Yeah. Well, that's where the individual made the mistake. That's he right. said, I don't have a driver's license. I don't have any insurance. And the registration, um, you know, or, or give them a an identification information of name, address, phone number, all that stuff on it. Because it wasn't in the system, the the piece of iron, the automobile, or the person, they couldn't find anything in the system. Then they chose, even though a request was made, sometimes just give me the ticket, I'll go on my way. Yeah. No, well, they chose to smash the window. Well, like I said, if, if some cop stopped me on the side of the road and I didn't have a driver's license, no tags, no ID or ID that he does not recognize, and he says to me, well, you know what, I'm going to have to take you in. I say, okay, you can take me in, take me straight to the magistrate. He say, uh, well, we're going to go to a booking station first. I say, well, no, you know, I have the right, you know, this is the common law country. I'm more than glad to go with you, but you're going to take me straight to the magistrate. No pit stops, no bathroom, no donut breaks, straight to the magistrate. The magistrate is available 24 hours, seven days a week. You know, and I know the court is always open. Please bring me straight to the magistrate. Then I bring you straight to the magistrate. You tell the magistrate, what kind of nation do we live here? 
Is this a common law adversarial country? Yes. Is there anybody filed a claim against me for causing a harm or injury? No. Well, then I didn't break the law, did I? No. I violated a code. Oh, I massively pummeled codes, didn't I? I broke every freaking code in the book, didn't I? Yeah. Well, what's what's the what's the highest jurisdiction of this land? Common law. Common law contract, right? Basically, contract or common law. Do I have a contract with this man? No. Okay. So did I break the law? Is there any claim before the magistrate at this time? No. There's plenty of uh, citations, but a citation is not a claim. So am I free to leave? And she's going to have to say, or he's going to have to say, yes. If there's no claim before, you got to let me go. And you can tell her, the cop is like, look, would you like to just drive me back to my truck and be? I'll be on my way? Or if you're going to say, well, I can't hear you us anymore, I'm going to sue you. How do you want to go with this? Now, do you want to just be nice and bring me back and give everybody else fair warning in your little county? Like, that's what I did when I got the ticket. I told the court enforcement officer after the trial. I said, oh, since we're, since, we're, we're, since we're here in the hallway, he ran out and he said, oh, my God, how did you do that? I never lost the court, blah, 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 blah. He said, that was amazing. What just happened in there? What did I just witness? I said, oh, good. Well, we're out here in the hallway. I said, uh, I'm giving you fair warning. The next time you see me come through your county, and I'm doing 90 miles an hour. I said, no, 900 miles an hour. And I'm doing it in reverse. And I'm zigzagging all over the road. And I'm flipping my car from one end of the county line to the other end of the county line. You better not interfere with my right to travel. Or I will have your pension. You will work for me for the rest of your life. I will garnish your paycheck. And uh, I'm going to sue this county for everything it's got. Okay? He says, how are you going to do that? I said, did I just beat you in court? Yeah. Did you ever lose before? No. I said, you don't think I can do it again? Watch me. I said, and give all your buddies down in the county office a fair warning as well. He said, I still don't know how you did what you did. I said, well, go learn the law. He said, I'm the court enforcement officer. I said, yeah, I heard about all you good merit badges and president award seals and how long you've been doing this. Yeah, you don't know law. I'm a lawman. You're a court enforcement policy officer. That's what you are. I'm a man of the law. I know law. You don't, obviously. So it's so funny. Like I said to folks, you know, we, I was a little pissed when I last saw the man. But it was funny. We went down there about two, three months later to the sheriff's department. My sister had to get uh, paperwork to transfer from the school from the deaf and blind here in Virginia to a local uh, county school, high school that she was going to work at. And uh, we were happened to run into the sheriff, just, uh, the deputy man just happened to see us at the window. And he ran out and said, oh, he said, I'll take care of these folks. So he said to me, he says, I still can't figure out what you did. He said, a couple of months went by, and we're still trying to figure out what you did. I said, all I did was I did for the court. For the court. I said, look, officer, sir, I could sit here until I'm, until I'm 90 years old, until you're 100 years old, we could sit here for the rest of your life, and you will never understand the difference between a law and a code, because you have it so drilled in your brain that the code is the law. It is not. It is too completely... Yeah, that, that's exactly what we said to this other person. Where's I... the law? And I said, the law is the code. Well, what I'm saying is, and... you know, what happened to me in Cliff the judge had to actually read it right out of his own code book. And when he read it, he's like, huh, oh, my God. Like, all these years I've been, like, I've been uh, breaking a law. I was like, yeah, judge, you've been passing down uh, unlawful orders. Yeah, y y you see what you see what's so clearly in front of you now, judge? Because, like I said, the code is written in nice big 12 font. The law is written like four font at the bottom of a footnote. The judge doesn't even see it. I had to tell him. I said, you know, what do you want me to bring the law to the court? He's like, what law? Your law. What law? Your law. I said, no, Freeman, on that nonsense. Your law. I'm not going to use some Jesus stuff or some constitutional nonsense. I don't have to rely upon that. I'm going to bring your own damn code into it. Because for everything that's written legally in that book, you also have the lawful. There's a legal solution in there, and there's a lawful solution in there. The people who wrote that code book are incredibly intelligent people. There's always a way out. Everything is always legal, and at the same time, it's always illegal. But law is always the same. The law never changes. The law is black and white. Legal? Eh. Today it's colorful. Today you can't smoke pot. Eh, 50 years from now you can't. Tomorrow you can't. Tomorrow you can't. Eh, it all depends. That's legal. But the law never changes. You can smoke pot as long as you don't hurt nobody. That's the law. I can have 10,000 pounds of pot in my car as long as I don't hurt nobody. That's the law. I can transport pot from my house to my neighbor's house. As long as I don't hurt nobody while I'm doing it, that's the law. Is it illegal? Oh, you betcha. But maybe 100 years ago, transporting pot was legal. Now it's illegal. Now watch this, tomorrow it's legal. Now watch this, tomorrow it's illegal. It all depends what society believes in at that point in time. But as long as I'm not harming anybody, 
I'm going to drag the law before the court. He said, show me in the law where I caused any harm. He did it. Well, I'm going home. People will start to understand soon enough because people are just getting overwhelmed by code. People are just getting pummeled by code. So people don't understand what I see so clearly. People are going to start to get it when their traffic tickets are no longer $50 and they're five, six, seven hundred dollars $700. People are going to say, wow, you know, I'm not going to pay that. Is there a guy on line on YouTube I could watch to show me how to get out of traffic tickets? Because I can't just afford to pay, you know, 40, 50 bucks anymore. These guys want five, six hundred dollars Mm-hmm. Well, the big buzzwords now are uh, you didn't cooperate with the guy on the road, and even though you're given offers, and they were denying the offers completely, you know, with uh, with witnesses to be able to collaborate that. Like, all I said was, I don't have the paperwork at this time in which you uh, uh, demand of me, you know, that you bore with me. I, I don't have that paperwork at this time. Is there anything else I could help you with today, sir? And they say, well, you're going to have to do this. And say, is that an order? And you say, oh, I'd be glad to carry out that order. Because he knows ignorance of law is no excuse. When one man orders another man to do something, the other man has the right to claim compensation, to be ordered about, to perform. Put my hands on the car. Oh, is that an order? Oh, absolutely. I love carrying out orders. Is there anything else you'd like me to do today if you say? Yeah, spin around. Okay, how many times do you want me to spin around? Just once, but just half the spin. Oh, okay, okay. He knows mm-hmm. it's going to call. He's just racking up the bill. Mm-hmm. He's not- no, when he gets it, he's going to be like, hey, what the hell is this all about? I'm not certainly not going to hand the bill on the side of the road so you can put a bullet in my head and kill me. He's like, hey, that's one of those wise guys who think they know the law. I'm going to put a bullet in his head, and I'm going to put a 22 in his boot, and I'm going to say he was reaching for a gun. I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm not a guy with yeah. a gun. I'm not stupid. I'm just going to remember everything he ordered me to do. It's just like if you went to a, a fancy Italian restaurant, and you say to the waitress, hey, give me a bottle of uh, wine, give me a bottle of uh, Chardonnay, give me a bottle of this, give me a bottle... She's not writing it down. This waitress is like, okay, give me a plate of uh, scampi, give me a plate of this, give me a plate of lasagna, give me a plate... She's not writing it down. Next thing you know, she makes the magic happen. She brings you back all your stuff. She does everything you order her to do. In an hour or two, she's going to give you a bill. Yeah. That's all. Uh, and, that's right. And, and then you think you're going to argue with her? And say, I didn't order the scampi. I was like, well, yes, you did, sir. And, well, it's all gone. Prove it. You know, oh, please, you want to play that game with me? You can say to the judge, did, did I not cooperate? Did I not put my hands on a call? Yeah. Did I not put my hands behind my back? Did I not sit behind the seat like you told me to? Did I not get out of the car? Did I not do this? Did I not? Well, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Well, there's 50 bucks of this, 100 bucks of that, 300 bucks of that, 500 bucks of that, 20 bucks of that. I gave you a discount because you asked me to do it twice. So that one, I only gave you five bucks on that one. Now, pay me. What do I got to tell your boss? Who's going to pay this thing? Who's liable for this guy? Like mm-hmm. I said, if, there's a great video. There's a great video on YouTube. I'm try, I'll try to see if I can put the link on it. From an old man, like 60, 70 years old, in England, the magistrate told the bailiff, remove that man from my court. The man told the bailiff, if you touch me, I'm going to own you. He's like, what? I am going to sue you. I'm going to garnish your paycheck, and I want to take your pension. Do not touch me. So the bailiff looked at the judge and said, can this man sue me? Magistrate didn't say a freaking word. He looked back at the judge. No, sir, I'm asking you a question. Did this man just tell me, can he sue me? Can he take my pension? I'm like, magistrate, answer me. And, 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 the, and the magistrate wouldn't answer the, the, the bailiff. And the bailiff just walked away from the old man and said, old man, you're on your own. I ain't touching you. And the crowd went wild. Just, mm-hmm. because, just because the judge or magistrate says, take that old man and throw him off the building, you can't just grab a man and throw him off a building. Well, the magistrate mm-hmm. the judge did it. I don't care. You can't throw the man off the building. You're going to jail. Well, the judge mm-hmm. told me to. You're going to jail. You can't just order somebody to do something. Mm-hmm. You're going to go to jail. You can't just... And that's, what, that's what they do. Whether you have any time, they just touch you and grab you and whatever. And oh. pull you out of cars and stomp on your body. Big men stomping on women. And of a bill. It is out of control. And of a bill. He knows the law. He knows he can't cause harm to a man. I don't care what the code says, how he can enforce his code. He can enforce his code by putting three bullets in your spine. That still means he's breaking the law. Just because he's enforcing a code doesn't give him the right to break the law. The law is simple. Cause no harm to man. Did you cause harm to man? Yes. I don't care what hat you were wearing. I don't care if you're a judge. I don't care if you're a bailiff. I don't care if you're a cop. Did you harm a man? Yes. You don't think the Germans said that after World War II? Well, Hitler told us we could kill all these Jewish women and children. 
I don't give a damn yeah. what you can do. You can't go yeah. off. Everybody knows. Is it called Hitler told you to kill your mom and your daughter? Would you have done it? Well, no. Well, what made yeah. you think somebody else's mom or somebody else's daughter you killed? She's That's somebody. right. And, and they, all those individuals got executed. That's right. Nobody, nobody, everybody understands the simple nonsense. Just because you believe that, well, the cops do it anyway, give them a bill. They understand what a bill is. They know how to pay a bill. They're all insured. All the clerks are caught. Everybody in the court building is insured. They know how to pay a bill. Mm-hmm. They pay the bill. They're like, hey, you know what? We just lost this uh, suit to this lady for $2 million. Um, we're going to have to dip into the insurance fund. Just like a major uh, a law firm. If one lawyer does something wrong, the whole law firm puts in a pool for an insurance claim, and everybody, all lawyers chip in for, uh, illegal, uh, for legal fees or uh, insurance compensation, insurance uh, uh, policy. They all chip in. Same thing with the courts. I'm sure it just comes right out of their paycheck. They're like, well, you know what, everybody, we, we put in five bucks a month, a month paycheck. We get this insurance policy in case we get sued. They're all insured. They're, they're all insured. They're all identified. They know if they cause any harm to a man's constitutional, statutory, or, or uh, common law rights, that they're liable for a suit. They all know that. I pulled it off the federal website. That clearly says that. If you violate somebody's constitutional, common law, statutory rights, you're setting yourself up and you're liable for a suit. We here at the Federal District Court provide insurance. If you'd like to provide some more personal insurance, if you don't believe that we're going to provide enough for you, feel free to go buy private insurance. That's exactly what it says. They said, but please, if you find private insurance, do not go around the courthouse and try to tell everybody else about the insurance you found during business hours. Tell the other court officers or court personnel the, the insurance you found on your private time. It was like a memo that went around the federal court saying, please don't uh, try to sell private insurance policy in court during business hours. We provide insurance for you, but if you don't believe you have enough, well, fine. You find a private insurer, that's fine. You carry the freedom of people's rights, that's fine. We, you know, common law, statutory, or constitutional rights. But please don't sell insurance during business hours. So why would they be bothering to get insurance to clerks in the court? Be bothering to get insurance if they're going to get sued. 